just seven games left to review now to complete the Mastertronic Chronicles. So pretty much everything I review from now on is going to be the last of something. This one is the last of all the text adventures released by Mastertronic and it's called Kentilla. While this may be the last of the text adventures, it is the first of any Mastertronic game that I've looked at that has got this funky blue packaging on the tape case there. Funky blue plastic. So that's a first. And uh, the front cover has got the Kentilla logo on. Quite a nice bit of artwork and the Mastertronic logo at the bottom there. I do wonder how many people bought this game thinking it was going to be some kind of hack and slash kung fu sort of ninja style game uh, and got a little bit disappointed when they found out it was a text adventure but there you go there's the spine it says Kentilla in the grid style sort of background and the blurb about the game Kentilla is a richly devious adventure collecting objects is not just an end it's not an end just a means to it much is hidden and many apparently useless things can have curious effects on those who threaten you but you will have to find that out so again, it doesn't really make it clear that it's a text adventure there, and I think that probably would have resulted in some disappointment for some people who purchased it. One look at the screenshots does, of course, confirm that it is a text adventure with some graphical representation of the locations. And inside there's some fairly detailed instructions, including details about a sophisticated input editor to ease command entry. There's a list of the usual single word commands for moving around, looking at your inventory, saving, loading, etc. And then some more action verbs that you might use during the game. Uh, it seems to have quite an advanced uh, interface. You can look at adjacent locations, for example. You can give objects to characters and take them back, presumably. You can talk to characters. Uh, there's various other things. There's some hints there. Basically just the usual stuff about text adventures and the loading instructions at the bottom there. Here's the loading screen and basically you can see it's just a recreation of the front cover artwork much like many Mastertronic loading screens. Pretty nicely done and it says there Kentil by Derek Brewster. Not sure if that's how his name is spelt or not. It's not the typical way of spelling Brewster. But we'll maybe find that out when the game loads. So here it, the game's loaded and there's no introduction or title screen, you just get started with the game straight away. Um, one thing I should mention straight away is it's got a Rob Hubbard tune in, playing in the background. That is something I've lamented on some of these other text adventures is that basically they could have put some music in the background to make it a little bit more exciting. So there is some atmospheric music playing in the background. Uh, and straight away in this game you can see that I'm at Ogron's house on the edge of a forest and a thin Urgamal has entered the screen and attacked me. Uh, having already played the game a couple of times, I know the first thing I need to do is open the door and then go south. Hopefully he won't follow me. And uh, you can see Ogron's taken a sword. He's not going to attack me though, because what I can do is say... Give me the sword. And Ogron gives me the sword. Ogron says this is the sword of the great warrior Ashka. Uh, and then you can go say to you can go into a bit more detail about who you're saying to. Say to Ogron. Thanks, dude. Which actually when you address a character directly you get a nicer colored text that doesn't clash with the background quite as much so Ogron says hello and Graco is yeah whatever so you can say say to Ogron his ass is mine and he's not saying anything else so that's it basically you've got a sword now which means I can actually fight some of the other um, creatures that appear on the screen from time to time so back out of the house and that character that creature's actually vanished now which is useful uh, other things you can do is you can check your score which actually tells you how much health you've got as well so I have 0% wounds at the moment I've completed 0% also and it's basically like any other text adventure you go from screen to screen pick objects up interact with things on the screen and try and complete the adventure 
which I'm sure you can guess I'm not going to do. The graphics are pretty bland and very small uh, area of the screen is actually filled up with the graphics as well. I could have drawn a house better than that, I think. So, um, I'm going to go... Well, I'm going to show that you can also look in various places. So if I look west, so I actually moved west, I'm just seeing what's there. Nothing. Look east. And there's some of these uh, unpleasant ergamols to the east, so probably better to avoid them for the time being. So I'm going to go north, which I haven't looked north, but let's go anyway. So, okay, the ergamols there, one of them is, so I'm going to try and kill him. Erga should do, I would have thought. And it, I attacked him, but it didn't kill him, so let's try again. Injured again. And I finally killed him. So if I look now, I'll see a thin ergamol on the floor. Let's see if I can search him. Nothing to find. So I shall move on. Can't remember what the X is over there. North or south. Uh, south is where I came from, so I shall go uh, north. And here there's a rattling quag, which is also attacking me, so let's try and get rid of that. Ooh. Quag. And that's been killed. Uh, so, hmm. Crappy typing. I find nothing. Uh, let's try picking it up. Take. Quag. Right, I can pick that up. I don't really know what a rattling quag is. Maybe some kind of snake or something. Obviously nothing too big that you can't pick it up. Uh, so let's now go... I can't remember where I am. So uh, basically I'll adventure around and see if I can find something interesting. There's lots of screens that describe lots of stuff. Very detailed text trying to set the scene. And to be perfectly honest, I don't really care that much about it. So actually just one screen later and I'm in the foothills of a large mountain range and there's some stairs going down so I'm going to go down the stairs and I'm in a cave with some badly drawn stalactites and stalagmites I can go east or west let's have a quick look now I'm in a cave could be dangerous so look east there's a rope and some cave zats whatever they are let's look west there's nothing let's go west first and foremost then Oh, that's where I came from. Well, that's not very good, is it? The, the directional stuff on this is a bit peculiar. You go one way and you end up back where you started, but then you can't go back to that location again. So let's just... Was that west? Yeah. And then down. And I can only go east or west, and if I go west, I go back to where I came from rather than up. And, but then if I go east, it puts me back in the desert. Doesn't make any sense. That's confusing. So I'll, I've got to go east then in this cave system. Let's see what happens. We've got a rope and some cave zats, uh, and I can go up. They don't seem to be attacking me as yet. It's a good thing. Oh, well, there's loads of them all over the place. There's a closed door to the south. Open door. It's locked. Surprise, surprise. That was inevitable. Uh, so, basically all I can do is go back down. So let's try and get this rope. Oh, I forgot to say that I wanted it. Get rope. Okay, picked up the rope. Let's try to say to... Um, small... Hello. I talked to the small caves that and the small caves that says hello. Okay, um, let's, I don't really know what to do now. They seem to be friendly, but um, I don't know if I'm supposed to ask one of them about the request or what. So let's just try going to the west now. Ah, okay, the caves that won't let thieves leave. Okay, let's try, say, to um, Chief. Can I have 
the rope. I talk to him, he doesn't talk back. I'm just going to try killing him because I can't really be bothered. Kill small. Oh, and they're all attacking me now, unsurprisingly. Uh, so, kill small again. You get the idea of what's going to happen here. I'm probably going to get killed off. Kill chief. Kill chief. Oh no, kill him. Kill Finn. And again. Right, killed them all. So let's try searching them for a key. Nothing. Oh, spell search. You can actually abbreviate most things. Nothing on the chief. Nothing. I'm bored. As usual, too much work, too much typing. If I wanted to type, I'd be at work earning some money rather than doing loads of typing at home. So um, I will exit this location, see if I can go find anything else. I can't go in that direction. So I am now back at Ogeron's house. I'm going to try going whichever direction I didn't go before, which was east. Oh, and there we go. Um, there were some Ergamals there, and I've been overpowered by the Ergamals and locked in a dungeon. And a large Ergamal enters, he carries a nasty knife, and uh, there's a closed door to the west, and someone called Elva. So let's try say to Elva. Hello? She says she, I'm assuming it's a she, says hello. I don't know why I'm assuming it's a she. And the large Ergamal's attacking me. I'm probably pretty close to death now. And that's 83% wounds. Horrible brown coloured text there. Uh, let's try opening the door. Surely it's going to be locked. No, it's not. Okay. So let's try going west. And Elva seems to be following me. And there's an exit down. I'm guessing those doors are going to be locked. And right. The Ergamals found me and attacked me and I'm dead and basically after all that I've completed 0% talk about unrewarding so basically just like any other text adventure it's boring I can't be bothered um, it's way too much hard work for minimal progress it's only redeeming qualities it has got a pretty reasonable atmospheric Rob Hubbard tune in the background but for me I'm sure you can guess what it's gonna, I'm going to say not worth one ninety nine. If you only knew the power of the dark side. Two. Oh. One. Zero.